Okay, uh, open to Matthew 25, Matthew 25. <coughs> Matthew 25. All right, we, uh, this is almost going to be the finishing part tail end of our uh, dispensation series. So just to review, um, if you have the chart with you, then we would have gone, initially you start off with, as far as the things that we would see, it would have been innocence, uh, being in the garden, and then at that point, whenever uh, Adam sinned, Adam fell, then they go into being governed by conscience. And then once you have the time period from basically when they're kicked out of uh, the Garden of Eden and up until Noah's uh, time that you have the governing under just the uh, conscience that folks aren't, excuse me, folks aren't uh, still being, uh, I guess, obedient to God at that point. And so God repented because he saw that the uh, thoughts of man were evil continually in his heart and that so, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and so you have Noah, his sons, and then his wife, and then their wives that were spared. Um, once they are able to disembark from the uh, ark, uh, what Noah does is he sets up an altar, and then you have uh, worship of the Lord again, and then the Lord comes to him and tells him that uh, from that point forward, uh, this is how it's working, is that, uh, that by man's blood, if man's blood is shed, that the, the man's blood who shed the man's blood, his blood will be shed. So in other words, now you have an institution of what would be human government, where as you didn't have that before, it was basically the Lord that would be the revenger, or the avenger of those that would, uh, and even, they, even though his character is still the same today, as far as we're not supposed to requite evil for good, he does allow and he gives allowance. Where am I? Uh, he gives allowance for uh, the fact that we, as men, uh, are able to execute judgment on, on folks as far as with regard to crime. So you have the institution of uh, human government at that point. Now within that, uh, you have some amendments. Uh, in particular, when he starts narrowing his focus in working through mankind to Abraham in particular, and it wasn't as if um, Abram was the only one that was going to be uh, worked with, but rather he just chose to narrow himself or restrict himself to working through Abram, but still with the scope of the whole world. Because uh, Abram's promise that was given to him was that uh, all the families of the earth will be blessed through him uh, and through his seed. And then he gives uh, expansion as far as his, uh, his promise in Genesis 12 originally to in Genesis 15 that his seed is going to be as a sand of the seashore, uh, who at that time he didn't have anything. He didn't have a child. And then even then, when he does have a child, um, well, when he does have the child of promise, okay, he sinned. Abram sinned in unbelief, and then he listened to his wife, and uh, he uh, had a relationship with Hagar at Ishmael. Uh, but God said that that wouldn't be how I was going to bless him and how he was going to... Uh, Give, give his promise, but it was going to be from the seed of his own bowels, uh, basically through through Sarah. And then once he has um, Isaac, that uh, he didn't see in his lifetime, if you looked at Hebrews 11, uh, the fulfillment of sand to the seashore, because uh, he only would have had Isaac. But then you have um, that same promise being uh, passed down through Isaac and Rebekah, and then down to Jacob, uh, who would later be renamed Israel, and through his kids. And then in Israel, uh, once he has his children, uh, even in Egypt, before he passes, he gives blessing to them, and then he gives even more particulars as far as how God is narrowing how who, who he's going to work through. Um, but it's still through the lineage uh, of Abram. And then within that, you fast forward a few hundred years, and they have... Uh, the law that is given to them, uh, 
in, in wilderness wander, uh, wandering in Mount Sinai, and that is still through Abram's lineage, he's still working through there, but then he has another amendment that now you have, uh, though God's law and Romans were told uh, the us Gentiles who would not have had the law, uh, when we do those things by nature which are written in the law, then it's, it's a law unto us. It's, uh, it's God's imprint of his character and how he created us uh, when, when we do those things by nature. Uh, which are written in the law, but he exclusively gave it to uh, Abram's uh, children, basically to, to Israel, to the nation of Israel. And his intention was that had they been obedient, uh, which they won't always weren't, but that through them they were the vehicle through whom uh, not only he was going to bring Messiah, he was going to bring the promise of, of redemption for sin, but also he was it's the means by which he was going to bless the whole world. He want his his scope has always been to reach everybody, to have everybody come to the knowledge of him, to, to know him, to be saved, uh, to be born again, and to have his grace. Uh, and grace has always been available in, in every age. Uh, we've seen that. Following the law, uh, you have, in the chart here is listed as age of grace. And if you recall, we scratched that out because grace has been available in every age, even though like in Galatians, a few other portions, there is a contrast between law and the grace. Uh, the fact is, grace has always been available. Um, just because of the nature of God, God is gracious, God is loving, and God is always wanting to reach out and extend uh, His mercy. But it would be the, the church age. And then we see the Lord, uh, once He comes, uh, He lives, He dies, but He raises again from the dead three days later. And then those 40 days prior to Him leaving, uh, before uh, that 10 day period, 10 day window before Pentecost, he gives promise to them. And we see in Acts 1 8 that it was, uh, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts. Now, mind you, he was giving it to, at that time, who? It's obviously believers, yeah. But they were Jews. Okay, so in other words, they, they would have been the children of Israel. Um, but we see that his plan was, um, and here's something that's a little different. Even though um, he's still working through Jews, he's not working through Israel nationally. They're like temporarily set aside. He has his heart for them, and we see in Romans uh, in particular. Uh, 9, 10, 11, his plan for them, uh, still yet future pending, that he's not through with them. He has that heart and desire for them, but he's working through something that has been uh, what it was called a, a mystery in time past, but is now revealed. Uh, apostle Paul being the, the main um, apostle being used, but not, not the only one, as far as to be able to give us instruction uh, with regard to what he's doing in this day and age, which would have been the, the church age. So what he does is he wanted to create, as it says in Ephesians, uh, create uh, of twain one new man. So he took Israel, who was temporarily set aside, but not totally done with, and then he took everybody else to become, broke down the middle wall partition through Christ and made of them one new man, so that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, uh, male nor female, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And so right now in this period is the, the church. And so grace available to reach everybody. And our mission, as we've seen, is to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. So we are supposed to make him known. Now, like Israel, we're not replacing Israel, okay? Like Israel, in that we are his vehicle in which he's entrusted unto us his word. Uh, he's also entrusted unto us what he calls in 2 Corinthians 5, the ministry of reconciliation, okay, which is basically the job to go ahead and make sure that, hey, you need to come to Christ. You need to know God. You need to be reconciled unto him. Uh, and then he's also committed unto us the word of reconciliation being the word of God. Uh, and the gospel in particular, as far as the specific word, if you want to look at that which is the good news, hey, you can have sin forgiven. And the reason why is because Christ died to pay for your sin. And not only did he die, but he rose again from the dead three days later so you could have newness of life. 
And so it's not restricted simply to just, okay, I get uh, sin forgiven, I got, okay, eternity in heaven, but I have power to live now the will of God. I have freedom, and I have, uh, as we saw in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, an opportunity, an ability to be able to gain reward in living for him and in serving him. Uh, let's see. And then we saw last week with regard to something that is yet coming. Actually, the, the two things that are yet coming. We started and we're going to finish this week, which was tribulation. There's going to be a point in time when God is going to come. He's going to return. Christ is going to return in the clouds, and we are going to go up to be with Him uh, as He in the same in the same manner in which He departed. And at that point, there's going to be the start of a seven-year period, uh, first three and a half of which are going to be relatively peaceful, and then the last three and a half would be when you have uh, God Himself uh, from heaven uh, pronouncing the judgments and then opening the seals, and we saw that excuse me, in Revelation, uh, where you have the wrath of God uh, himself poured out on the earth. And from those that remain alive, that survive through that period, and there will be, we saw also that uh, people that are going to be born again in that time frame. Um, God is going to allow Israel um, to, I believe, it's, I, this is conjecture on my part, as far as the reason why, but... Uh, I believe like the reason for it is that he'll, he's going to allow, okay, it's fact he's going to allow Israel to reinstitute uh, the sacrificial system like they did back prior to Christ's coming. So they're going to have temple rebuilt and they're going to be offering sacrifices and they're going to be worshiping in that manner as if Christ had never come. Uh, but obviously Christ has already come and that's not needful, but I believe it's because of the hardness of their heart in the same way as uh, when the Pharisees approach him and ask him as far as uh, the issue of divorce uh, and that Moses allowed it you know, for the hardness of their heart but it wasn't so in other words it wasn't God's heart before that but he's going to allow the reinstitution of that during this time frame and then you have Antichrist come in sit on the throne over there in the temple and then he's going to try and basically do away with Israel but God's going to spare them. He's going to have uh, his own uh, set-aside remnant of 144,000 uh, Jewish male evangelists uh, that are going to be preaching the gospel, among others, that are going to be born again within that time frame uh, to go ahead. And then uh, many are going to be martyred. Uh, a handful are probably going to be spared. At the culmination of that, you see Israel being saved by God. Because uh, you have the world wanting to destroy them, attack them. And then this is where we come in for today as far as the kingdom period. Kingdom period. Uh, so Matthew 24. And kingdom period, just a synopsis, is that Christ is going to return, uh, step down on the Mount of Olives, and he's going to take rule and reign of the earth as he's promised that he's going to restore the, again the kingdom and he's going to physically rule from Jerusalem. So. Matthew 24. Uh, just beginning of verse 1, it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, uh, and his disciples came to him uh, to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See not these things, verily I say unto you, uh, there shall not be left here one stone upon another uh, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat down, upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, uh, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Okay, so now, if you remember from Pastor's sermon series through this, those are three separate questions. So, when he answers, when Jesus responds to them, is going to be addressing those three separate issues, but not in, the, in, not, in the chrono, in not in chronological order of how they were asked. And he's addressing three step. They ask three separate things, so he's going to address those three separate things in his response. Um, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he's addressing the just the actual end of the world. Okay. 
Uh, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and uh, shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many uh, shall wax cold. But he that, uh, that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved, or he's going to be rescued. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations, and then shall the end come. Uh, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by uh, Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. And this is this is talking about Antichrist. When Antichrist is, uh, this is in the tribulation time when now things are going to start get bad. <clears throat> then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to. Uh, take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in these days. Uh, but pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Uh, for then shall be great tribulation, not, or such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved. Uh, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Uh, behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as a lightning coming... Uh, cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, for wheresoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be uh, gathered together. Now this is this is of his return during that time. So in other words, at the, at the tail end of his of the of the tribulation when he returns, it's going to be evident. It's going to be noticeable. Um, this is where a lot of folks get turned around or caught up as far as like, okay, this is not speaking of rapture. He's speaking of his return for when he comes during tribulation time, or at the end of the tribulation. Because um, uh, as far as uh, uh, the first part of his second coming, which would be rapture, uh, no man knoweth the, the time, nor the season, nor the hour, uh, not even the Son of Man, he said. Um, and it's going to be as a thief in the night. Uh, so in other words, we, we're to be looking for that, we're to be expectant but he, and so we, if we're, if we're basically we're being faithful, then we'll, we should be in a, in a position of readiness so that we're not caught off guard. Uh, and and what, what that is is that you don't lose your salvation or anything like that, but the fact is you don't want to stand before him ashamed. Okay? When he returns, he's coming, and he's coming quickly. And the fact is you don't want to you know, be caught doing something that you shouldn't be doing or maybe neglecting something that you should be doing, uh, and then have to stand and give poor account uh, of yourself. Or be in a position where you're like, um, basically we're just caught off guard. Uh, but th this, again, this, this would be different. With his return here, it's as if, um, boom, it's going to be very evident. It's noticeable. Uh, and then 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay, so now he's coming uh, very evidently. Uh, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpets, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other, Okay, now learn the parable of a fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. Uh, you know the summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. So this is distinguished from what would be, if we read in Thessalonians and even in 1 Corinthians, the rapture because this is of his coming 
when he's to rule and reign when he's going to come down. Uh, because that first part of the second coming, the rapture report, would be as a thief in the night. And there was no, nobody, nobody knows. There's nothing given to indicate as to what. But whereas when he comes to return for here, he's it's, he's giving a signal or a precursor as far as so if you're gonna if you're in the word of, well we won't be here <laughs> you know uh, but as far as for the folks that are going to be in the tribulation itself if they have access to the word of God and they are knowledgeable of the word of God and, and paying attention that'd be like okay well here here's some of the signs and so we know okay Christ is really really close to returning uh, we don't have that um, Apostle Paul expected that uh, Christ would return in his lifetime, uh, so he was expecting of it. And then, you know, we, we should have the same attitude, but we don't we don't have anything as far as a like a indicator or precursor as far as what they would have here. Um, okay, verse thirty four. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Okay, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words uh, shall not pass. Okay, uh, verse 36. Now, this is in response to, mind you, he's answering three different questions uh, of what he said. When is going to be the end of the world? When shall these things be? And then, what is the sign of thy coming? So, he's indicated already to them as far as the sign of thy coming. And then, um, so now he's, now he's answering a different aspect of the question of the three that he, he was asked. Uh, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, or Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until that day uh, that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, then shall two be in the field, and the one be taken, and the other left. Uh, the two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Okay, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known uh, in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered, would not have suffered his uh, house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such hour, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, uh, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Okay, blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. And uh, we can, uh, well, you, you can keep reading further, but the basic, he's addressing here at this point, this would be of our attitude as far as prior to prior to rapture. So this is, a, this, this is distinct from his second part of the second coming. This would be more of the first part of the first coming second part of the second coming is when actually he comes to step down to rule and to reign to establish his kingdom in righteousness. Uh, in Revelation 20, Revelation 20, what he's going to do is he's going to, when he rules and reigns, he's going to set up kingdom in actually Isaiah 65, uh, 66 speak of it of what his kingdom is going to be like whenever he is ruling uh, in particular but not only that but in Revelation as we see he's going to well we'll just read it but um, okay uh, uh, starting verse 1 it says and I saw an angel come down from heaven having to keep the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay, so now Satan's going to be removed. He's going to be thrown into a bottomless pit. Uh, well, verse 3, it says, And cast him into a bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years uh, should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Okay, so the season is a span of time, but we don't know how long. It could be a few months, it could be a few years, a few days. Don't really know. It's just a, a, a span of time. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and uh, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads 
or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Uh, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Uh, yes. The saints that are alive today will not be will not be part of the thousand year reign. Is that right? Those of us that are alive today in a rapture, at some point, are we are we died before this takes place? We will not be. We will be, we will not rise again for another thousand years. Is that correct? No. We. Um, Apostle Paul specifically states in, in 1 Corinthians about that we're, we're going to judge the angels. Uh, we're going to judge the world. So he's going to give unto us, even though we're not Israel, and even though we wouldn't have been saved under tribulation period, uh, we, you know, we're saved obviously prior to that. Okay, so who's, who's going to rise again in the thousand years? Uh, during the thousand years? Who's going to, who's, who's going to be the dead that's not going to rise again in the thousand years? Uh, unsaved dead as far as I'm aware. Oh, okay. They're going to be risen to be judged oh, okay. at final judgment, which would be Great White Throne. Where are they going to be this week? Is this going to be in hell then? Wait for judgment? Yeah. Hell's, um, you guys know this, that hell's not your final destination. It's like, uh, so like a fire is the final destination. Yeah. Hell, hell's like jail, okay? Jail's only temporary holding place until you get sentenced uh, or you know, whatever, absolve, <laughs> relieve. Uh, and then um, when you carry out your sentence, uh, whenever you're in court, that's, um, you go to prison. So pr prison's actual where you carry out your sentence. So lake of fire would be the prison. And jail is basically, or hell's jail. So it's a holding place uh, for you, but it's torment still regardless. It's still <laughs> painful and, uh, you know, something miserable that you don't want to go to. Uh, there's, you know, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, there's darkness, there's fire, uh, torment. You're tormented day and night in the flame. That's not, you know. And then you, st then, then you get raised to be judged before the Lord and then cast into the lake of fire. Uh, along with death and hell and the devil and demons and everybody else that uh, never, never was not found written in the book of life. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so they lived and reigned in, uh, with Christ a thousand years. So you get the, the the ones that are saved in tribulation that are um, going to be given the opportunity to be able to go ahead and reign and rule. Now we know because of uh, what uh, Paul told us in Corinthians that we are going to be reigning and ruling with them as well. But that depends on your faithfulness now, uh, your placement. Or your ability to be able to go ahead and, you know, reign and rule. Uh, I guess basically your 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 MLS, your job that you'll have uh, when you're uh, in kingdom time is going to be dependent on how faithful you were to the Lord. Now you're going to gain reward, uh, as we're told in First Corinthians three, uh, either gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble to be able to cast before Him, but also opportunity to be able to go ahead and serve some area of service. Uh, you might, you know be governor of, I don't know, whatever, you, if, well, I don't know, I don't even know if it would still be around. <laughs> but, say, uh, I'm just throwing this out there outside of my head, like, you might say you, you're going to be governor of Louisiana. Uh, I don't know why you <laughs> want to govern there, but, like, um, or, or you can be, say, um, depending on their, their, uh, their structure as far as how they, um, how they divide up authorities. Uh, you might be able to go ahead and rule uh, Tanzania, or you might be able to go ahead and uh, maybe be uh, governing Russia or something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what even left as far as what the continents, because all that's going to be shifted and destroyed, and uh, a third of the world's going to be like, as far as what we know it to be, uh, pretty damaged, um, and so it's going to be re uh, rearranged quite a bit. From how we know it to be, uh, whenever Christ returns, but our our ability to be able to go ahead and uh, when he talks about the, the the parable of the talents, that some were given ten, some were given thirty, some were given a hundred, and so you have now those that were faithful and least they were given much, and then those were that unfaithful though that which they had was taken away, and then you know you're gonna have the weeping wailing, and that is basically you're gonna be the. Uh, Bitter tears, as what uh, 
Peter cried out whenever he uh, was confronted by the Lord, uh, whenever he denied him after the, the cock grew three times. So you could be ashamed before him and then have loss of opportunity, loss of service. So we see Satan bound for a thousand years. He's going to be loosed following the thousand years for a season. And then... Uh, Uh, verse 6 is, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on the, uh, such the second death hath no power, uh, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And then when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom as, or is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, uh, being Jerusalem. And they came down, and then, um, and fire came down from God out of the heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. And then here's, here's the end. So at the end of a thousand years, you have Satan loose for a while, He's going to gather all the rebels that he can from basically the whole world to kind of converge onto Jerusalem to try and destroy it because his goal is he wants to hurt God. He wants to destroy God. Um, I mean, it's foolish, but he can't do that. And then he wants to take out as many people as he can. He wants to cause as much collateral damage as he can. Now, if we're born again, or those that would be born again, and during that time, he can't touch them. Uh, what he wants to do is he wants to ruin your life now, uh, make you uh, ineffective, make you as far as worthless in, in the sense of um, useless. You're not, you're not able to go ahead and gather reward, make your life a waste, get you distracted so that you're not giving your all for Christ, so that you're not Christ-focused, Christ-minded, uh, uh, so that you're living for self rather than for Christ and then living in the flesh, in the power of the flesh rather than living in the spirit. Uh, and then it, his tactic will be the same as far as then uh, with regard to trying to get rebels. There's going to be, it's crazy to think Satan would have been restricted from operating on planet Earth. And so you're going to have as close to perfection on the planet as you can, uh, accepting, you know, obviously having lived, if you would have lived in the garden. Um, but as close to perfection as you can with Christ literally physically on earth reigning and ruling and you still have people that are going to want to rebel. And, but there's going to be rebels uh, through and through. Uh, the heart of man is wicked. Uh, deceitful above all things. Uh, is, is that's really wicked. Who can know it? It's sad to see that. But there's going to be folks that are they're, they're going to reject even with God reigning and ruling on the planet. And what, he's, what, he, what he does or what he's going to do is he just speaks their destruction. Uh, I don't have much time for this. Uh, if we were to fast forward to chapter 21, and then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So this is speaking of when, in Peter, Second Peter, when he talks about that, seeing how that uh, this the elements are going to be burnt up with a great uh, fervent heat. In other words, God's going to destroy old earth and old heavens and everything that we know as far as present existence um, all just totally completely he's going to start like basically as you were from scratch so he's going to create a new heavens new earth and then he's going to create uh, new Jerusalem which is a huge 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 city uh, four square that is going to come down and it's going to be reaching between the actual planet going into the atmosphere and then we are going to have direct access. The difference is being, he talks about there's no sea, so you're not, but he, there is going to be water because there's going to be a river that is flowing out from the throne, a uh, crystal river, and then we are going to be able to, with, with our new transformed bodies, uh, go back and forth to where heaven is, like where, literally where God actually lives, where God is, and, and down into, so there's going to be, access between the two uh, and that would be if you wanted to count an eighth dispensation that would be eternity 
because that's that's not really part of the kingdom. That's just following. So that's how God is going to be operating beyond that. Anything beyond, I have no idea what we're going to be doing there. <laughs> it doesn't really speak to it. Um, conjecture on my part is much like how we operated in the kingdom. Uh, we are going to be given tasks because I, I would imagine that you know we're not like how the you know movies or TV shows or books and stuff show like we'd be floating around on clouds and stuff like that. Um, God always has something to do. He always gives tasks. And even though uh, in our what would seem um, strength, like d diminishing of strength or debilitating, uh, we're not going to have sin cursed body at that point. So, it, you know, I, I can't even, I don't know <laughs> what that's going to be like, but we'll be whatever, forever with him. You have a new earth uh, forever at that point. Okay, so this would be uh, dispensation. Now, mind you, uh, up until the end where Satan's loosed, uh, well, even, even within that, you still have grace available. The fact is grace is available then because a person's given an opportunity to believe on Christ. Now, I would imagine it wouldn't be very difficult to want to trust him or to want to believe on him because he's physically there. It'd be almost the same difference as when he was walking on earth, except during that time he was rejected wholesale, but now he's actually reigning and ruling. He's the governor, he, you know, he's the king, king of the earth, and then he's, you know, king of Israel. Uh, and so, you know, you're going to have first-hand witness of him, and everything's going to be reigning and ruling in righteousness, and you won't have deception, even though you'll have your own flesh. Well, we won't. We'll, we'll be changed by then. But the folks that in that time period are born, they'll still have a uh, sinful nature in their flesh and give an opportunity to be able to trust Christ. Uh, but they won't have the devil working actively to deceive them, to, to, to try and get, get them to not believe. Um, so grace available then. Um, so that kind of basically wraps up on our dispensations. One, does anybody have any questions? I know it seems kind of like kind of rambling some, but does anybody have any questions? All right, now you're going to ask, why is this important? What is the big deal with this? Uh, one, we see the character of God in this, and then uh, for next week we're going to look at some of the errors that people fall into because they twist scripture, either purposefully or maybe they just aren't educated very well in, in how to, uh, in, in really just uh, basic how to, how, to, how to read or study it. So they twist things. Uh, Calvinism is a big thing. And what they do is they replace uh, Israel with the church. And so they, it does away with God's promises to Israel. And also, well, they have other issues as well, but also they have a skewed view of God's grace towards the nation and toward everybody. Uh, that God basically, if you want to summarize it, God chooses some people to go to heaven, some people to go to hell. You know, his, his, his heart was never for everybody to want to, 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 to be saved. So he, some people are condemned, born condemned basically, created to, to, to be destroyed, uh, to be tortured in eternity. And that's not, that's not the heart of God. Uh, and there's a, there's a few other, um, uh, Hyper dispensationalism, uh, and then there's a few other errors that we're going to look at uh, as to see why. Okay, it was important to go ahead and even study this to begin with. Following this, after the next week, we're going to be going into a study on uh, biblical manhood, and then that would follow with biblical womanhood. So, in other words, what does the Bible say about gender? What does the Bible teach about uh, you saying, okay, what's <laughs> why are we learning this? Because it's important. There's a lot of people that are confused, uh, that are being uh, taught lies uh, from their youth. They're being taught lies, especially out in uh, local local school curriculums, about how they're created. God created them for a specific plan and for a specific purpose, and He created them male and female. The uh, Bible is very clear on that. And what does that entail? What does that mean? Uh, are men and women different? Yes. Okay. <laughs> And then we're going to be answering some of those kinds of things. So that'll be following uh, next week as far as when we look into the errors uh, for, for why dispensationalism is important to have studied.
Does anybody have any questions? Uh, okay, no. Uh, well, we're dismissed then. <laughs>